My name is Ilyasa Shabazz. In 2002, I released my first uh, book, Growing Up X, and, um, and now I just released my second book, um, Malcolm Little, The Boy Who Grew Up to Become Malcolm X. And in uh, January 2015, I'm releasing my third book, which is simply entitled X, and that's a young adult book. So I'm here today at the National Black Memorabilia and Collectibles Fascinating um, uh, Memorabilia from the African American Experience, the Negro Baseball League, BAM, you know, the World Boxing Association, dolls, jewelry, clothes, just so many really, really great things, chocolates, you know. So I'm really happy to be here and to, as a participant. Welcome back to Around the Diamond, everybody. Marvin Jackson along with my partner, Mark Gray. Recently, we spent some time at the National Black Memorabilia and Collectibles Show in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and the Negro League baseball exhibits were phenomenal. Let's take a look. My name is Lindsey Johnson, and I'm the uh, promoter and organizer of the National Black Memorabilia and uh, Collectibles Show. This is the 30th year for this event in the uh, greater Washington, D.C. area, and the uh, 15th year here at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds in Gaithersburg. It's an annual event, and our next show is April 11th and 12th, here, 2015, uh, in Gaithersburg. Our objective at this show is to uh, educate uh, people on, the, on African American history and culture, and one thing we consider a very important part of our history and culture is the Negro League Baseball. I had a museum at my house, and my wife had drawn several lines on the floor where I couldn't come across, and the ceiling, and everything, but uh, God found a way that uh, we can convert everything from the home into a church in West Baltimore, Lock Huron Presbyterian Church. Mr. Simmons attended that church. Mr. Simmons is a ball player who played for the Baltimore Eli Giants. Him and his wife asked me about perhaps opening a museum inside of a church, and we did that. All the artifacts I had was in the church. Then another blessing was, a couple years ago, our county executive, Kevin Kamenetz, was nice enough to offer us a permanent place, a home, for our museum, which is presently located at 10302 Grand Central Avenue in Baltimore, in Owings Mills, Maryland. That's where it is now, inside of a library on the first, second, and third level. Small ball is what the Negro League players were basically all about. The bunning, the stealing, the sliding, and they could run. They could run a lot. But these guys paved the way for a lot of the guys that are making mega dollars today. Adam Jones from the Orioles, I respect him. He loves the Negro League players. Uh, I have been around with uh, a lot of the players over a period of time. Charlie Pride, the country western singer, also played in the Negro League. And one of the oldest players that I ever met uh, was 105 years old by the name of Manito Navarro. And he died at the age of 105. Ted W. Duty Radcliffe, I met him before he died at 103 years old. There were three women that played also in the Negro League, and a lot of people aren't aware of that, especially the young women who want to play baseball. Do some research on Mamie Peter Johnson, Connie Morgan, and Tony Stone. Tony and Connie, unfortunately, they're both deceased. But Mamie Peter Johnson is still alive. She's still with us. The excitement of coming to our museum is very unique. Again, it's free to the public. I start on the first floor by a ledger that shows at 1878 when Moses Fleetwood Walker, Weldy Walker, and Bud Fowler. It's a timeline about the history that took place back in the day. Players in particularly um, that are here today at the Black Collectible Show, uh, Pedro Sierra, who played for the Detroit Stars and the Indianapolis Clowns. You have Jimmy Bland, who also played for the Indianapolis Clowns, who's here today presently with us. Uh, Mr. Luther Ackerson played for Satchel Page's team called the Satchel Page All-Stars. And you have a gentleman by the name of Eddie Banks who played for the Newark Eagles, one of the teams that Leon Day played for back in the day. These guys are here. Uh, they're ready to talk to you, to educate you, and they're easy to get to. You can go on the Internet and pull up a lot of information about the Negro League itself by looking on the either Negro League or Black Baseball. I came here because... One day my mom was watching the news and she saw an interview segment that Mr. Ray Banks was doing on WBAL 
and it worked out with a project that I was doing for my American history course in school and my project was on integration into baseball in the 1950s and I already had one interview done but we have to do two interviews so I got into contact with Mr. Banks and he directed me to Mr. Uh, Luther Atkinson and I came here to meet him and I did my interview and I looked around and I thought it was really cool and there's a lot of good information that I got on top of just the interview. Playing in Negro League was a great experience for me. Play with some of the greatest players, against some of the greatest players. And the most exciting time when Sasha Page approached me and asked me to play for him. That was one of the most exciting times me playing in the Negro League. When he said I was a major league caliber ball player and he asked me if I was signed with him, he was showcasing me to the major league. So I signed with him, making $125 a month, which was big money back then. You got $2 a day meal money, and they paid for hotel bills. So it amounted about $200 a month. But while playing with Satch, I played with, you know, like travel around, doing a lot of things. He taught me. I grew up on the ball diamond, really. I became a man through Satchel Page. But playing for him was one of the greatest experiences I ever had because he taught me how to be a professional. That's how he was. Yeah, I was signed by a, a Cuban-based scout for the Negro League. I came to play for the Indianapolis Clowns in 1954. And, and uh, I guess fortunately enough, even being a young fellow, I had the fortune to be play on the Oscar Charleston, who was one of the greatest players. And uh, it was a lot of nurturing. I played with them that first year, 54. And uh, 50, so he died that, that, that fall. In 55, I, I got signed by the Detroit Stars. So I went to play for Detroit Stars from 55 to 58. 1958, 59, and 60 are the years that I played in the Negro Leagues with the Eagles. And uh, it was like the last year. I was about 18 years, I was 18 years old then. And I, I managed to break the starting lineup. And I was just, I was just elated. But I was playing a game that I loved, never thinking or taking into consideration of the moment in history that I was involved in. I was just playing the game because I loved it. I went to school at Phelps Vocational High School in Washington, D.C. And, and I led the inner high in batting for two straight years. You know, my junior year in, in, in high school baseball, I hit 517. And my senior year, I hit 478. And a friend of mine was playing baseball for the Indianapolis Clowns by the name of Freddie Battle. And we just lost him not too long ago. But I went down to St. Petersburg, Florida, and caught, a, caught the Greyhound bus. It took us 28 hours of ride down there. And I tried off with a team, and I made the team. Now, the, uh, the Indianapolis Clowns had a couple of clowns on the team, you know, who entertained the crowd, and they played a couple of innings. But all of the other ball players were trying to get major league contracts. You know, Hank Aaron was the most famous player that ever played with the Indianapolis Clowns. And you know his story, 755 home runs, <laughs> you know. Uh, Paul Casanova, who played with the Washington Senators, and I played together with the Clowns. Baseball was such a great game that had people playing the game at the age that I started. Willie Mays was 16 years old when he started. Uh, 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 uh. Hank Aaron was 16 years old when they started, and there were a whole lot of guys back during those days who played the game because it was a way of life. It was a, it was a way of them feeding their families in, in, in many cases. Though we had to play, travel a lot and we, we didn't get paid a lot, but we always had the vision and, you know, and most, mostly after we knew that Jackie Robinson had opened the barriers. So it's just like, I, and then I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you, Jackie Robinson, because he, opened the door for, for me to become a professional player. I don't regret not making the major because he told us, all of y'all not gonna play in the major league. Don't be disappointed. He said, you got a numbers game. He said like this, if they sign every black ball player capable of playing in the major league, they wouldn't have any room for the white ball players. All right, Mark, a look at the Negro Leagues. And you know, they provided a way for black ball players to make a living, but it was also a fun and social outlet for Amer African Americans back then. 
That just, um, it was a different time then because, yeah. you know, baseball was America's national pastime. It was the African-American national pastime. So a lot of black folks, mm -hmm. from what I understood in the Negro League research that I did, would put on their Sunday attire. Much, That's they'd right. be dressed like you Sunday's going best. to the game. Right, right. Exactly. exactly. You know, so you go, you make Hats a day of it. To have, yeah. yeah, it was kind of like the black folks version of the Kentucky Derby. Right. You know, all the sisters <laughs> in hats and all the guys in zoot suits and stuff. They had the ballpark watching the baseball game. Mm -hmm. So you think about it. Negro League baseball impacted us both on the field with players, but how about opportunities when you think of sports? I mean, just think about it. Sports from a business side exactly. of things. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got black ownership in sports. That's right. You've got black sports writers and sports broadcasters. If it wasn't for the Negro League and needing a beat, I don't think we'd ever have – you know, gotten where we are. Probably wouldn't be here in Booyah if uh, <laughs> they hadn't been for the Negro Leagues. Yeah, and uh, some of the favorite teams, of course, the Pittsburgh Crawfords. Now, the Pittsburgh Crawfords had one of the greatest teams ever. Uh, they had a team that consisted of Satchel Paige, yeah. Josh Gibson, Oscar Charleston, uh, Judy Johnson, and Cool Papa Bell. Now, some people say that was probably the greatest Negro League team of all time. I say it might have been the greatest baseball team of it all It was time. loaded. I mean, yeah. you can make a compelling <laughs> argument. I'd like to see them go up against the murderer's row of gas exactly. house gang. Exactly. Now, wouldn't that have been great to that see would that? Have been, it, it would have been. <laughs> and Well, you know, we miss out on a lot through, um, mm -hmm. you know, the ignorance of some people. Mm -hmm. And exactly. we saw that the NBA's right. not going to tolerate it, and I guess baseball not Exactly. Either. And uh, we had some great names in baseball, like we mentioned, Cool Papa Bell. Bullet Rogan, Buck Leonard, Turkey Stearns, double Fleetwood duty Walker, Ratcliffe. Double Duty Ratcliffe. I so mean, does that mean he played hard during the game and then at night? I guess so. <laughs> you know I don't I'm know saying? what that double duty meant. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was just a great time back then for uh, Negro League baseball. It was a great time for baseball. And Everybody then, should have been coming together. Of course, the greatest names, uh, the most notable, Satchel Page and Josh Gibson, huh? Josh, you know, legends. I mean, yeah. and, and these and guys Robinson. were the original, like, two sports stars yes. before you had nutrition mm -hmm. and all these other people giving mm -hmm. you clear and cream. These guys were going out morning and night, playing big, traveling rough. Mm -hmm. And like uh, I think Mr. Banks said, they were playing because they loved the game. Yeah, yeah. When you can do something that you love and you can provide for yourself and your family, you truly are living a good life. All right. Well, to get more information on the Negro Leagues, you can go online and look up Negro Leagues and black baseball. Uh, and also, uh, you can check out the Simmons Museum up in Owens Mills, Maryland. Simmons Museum of Negro League Baseball. And their number is 410-597-9797. And ask for it, Mr. Ray Banks. All right. Well, it's time. I, I'm getting the signal. Okay. <laughs> this one's out of here, huh? Yeah, okay. yeah. So you can go celebrate your birthday, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, happy thanks birthday. For, thanks for letting me off, bro. Yeah. We got to do it again real soon. Yes.